Welcome back to Day 9 Daily number 608, where we're learning to be a better gamer thanks to First, who played like a kick-ass badass in Part 1, and it was all down to early scouting timing. Now, let me do something I know that you all are just begging for. Do I have some of this? Ah, yes. Guys, my left eye, it's kind of hurting, so we're going to, uh-oh. Oh, the eyeball's coming out. Oh, that feels good. Putting the contact away. I know if there's one thing that people love seeing, strangers touch their eyes. Hi. Let's hop into this game and start to see how first is going to play off of this. We looked at great scout timings, but in short, what position is first in? He's canceled the Dark Shrine. Rain is now obligated to do some sort of defense against Dark Templars because, well, he scouted it. And first is going to exploit that very, very very, very, very well. Mmm. Damn, that eyeball's stingy. So, first and foremost, actually, I should probably avoid using that term, because that's just gonna be funky. <laughs> Allow me to say, foremostly, <laughs> I can't say first and foremost, because it's the player's name. Foremostly, I think Rain does a really sweet move, building this Nexus with this walled off, while getting the Observer. He doesn't have the Observer yet. Sure, the D DT can take a couple swipes, but it'll, uh, you know, um, still be defended. It's, n it's no problem. No problem at all. In this alternate circumstance, um, first, does have the benefit of this Twilight Council being done. So he's a little farther ahead in tech than he might uh, originally appear to be. And first, has a second luxury as a result of putting his opponent on the back foot. He can freely move all around the map. When players want to get up their Dark Templar defense, they are going to stay put. I mean, if you move out as rain, you run a huge risk of just having a single DT warp in back home and kill off all your probes, so. First can now get away with a hell of a lot of stuff. Going for observers right away. Two stalkers at the front saying, real active, probe at the south. I mean, the coverage first is, is pretty sensational. Pretty unbelievably kick-ass. Um, all the non-stop chrono boosting to get up as much as possible, and thank goodness for hallucination because first is actually going to get the scout off that he needs. So in this position, first has pretty much done his forced moves. He has to get up uh, an observer of his own because there is a potential for DTs, um, although it was kind of unlikely. And again, unlikely because of all the intense scouting that first did and whatnot. <laughs> first kind of force gets observer, first kind of force get this immortal because he doesn't know, but then finally he's going to get in here and he's going to see Robo Bay. He's going to see Twilight Council. Doesn't know if there's Blink or not, but he can definitely conclude that there's going to be Colossus coming up on him. And by the way, if you cancel this and try to do something else, that's definitely bad. <laughs> if you build a Robo Bay, go with the Robo Bay, man. So here's where I start to totally dig first Chili. He gets the Robo Bay up right away. What's becoming very common in nowadays games is to, um, particularly uh, on the Master's Ladder, I downloaded a bunch of games of just arbitrary uh, Masters, um, Low Grand Master, High Diamond, th this, this kind of range, what people have a tendency to do, and hell, even some of the Grand Masters that you'll watch on streams, what they'll have a tendency to do is to begin building Colossus and to play super defensively in this period of time. You'll even see them occasionally throw down a second Robo Base. They can go double Colossus or production. Wow! And then they'll transition into charge. Two more gates. It's generally five gates. And a Twilight Council. And then they'll begin taking this thing. First is going to cut every damn corner in the universe. But he's not going to do so while being super passive. Getting out the phoenixes like crazy. Why continuing to do this? Because, well, we've identified that he's starting to build Colossus. Let's go ahead and get a count of him. Let's see if he's starting to make any additional gateway units. 
let's begin getting our forge up. Because at most he has one Colossus, we don't need to lose our mind over that timing. We may as well go for a little bit of the long term first. I really like this move, these early forges. Some players are even getting them before the Colossus comes out. Hey, cool, just getting some scouts. You know, I don't see any Colossus. Maybe he's hiding them, but it was a pretty damn thorough scout. In the meantime, just two Immortals. Nice, petite amount. Let's watch some sweet moves from first. Gets range, gets up the Colossus, chrono boosting there. Has been chrono boosting non-stop on probes, but now can just kind of take it easy on probes and just do non-stop chronoing on upgrades. How kick ass. Love it. Observer stays home. We don't need a scout with observers because damn it, we have hallucinations. Force fields are no longer going to be amazing. Force fields are only amazing early. That's why for the first began by getting these three sentries, and then once things were kind of chill, he went scouting. Early on, it's amazing against, you know, enemy immortal stalker pushes, but when the other dudes have Colossus, it's just, it doesn't really matter that much. So cool. Another expander. Two stalkers pop up to try to pick off scouting. It's still good to do these sorts of things. But by and large, almost no gateway units. The short sum up of this mid game is very active robos, very idle gateways. I actually wish I could have these selected all game long, but I think that's a little bit overbold. Now, first is cutting a couple probes here and there, but not tremendously. This is hilarious given the existence of this guy. Does he actually let this finish? This is pretty hilarious if he does let it finish. <laughs> oh man. Actually, I didn't know. Okay, forget the analysis for a moment. Is first mortal? Is he mortal? Is he mortal? Oh, no way. No way. Oh my god, he's not a Vorticon. Okay, let, let me actually see. He's going to research charge out of this. There's, there's a bunch of stuff going on. No way. That's the most mortal thing I've ever seen. All right, pull him right on back. Um, pulled back way too hard. Okay, we're just gonna go through this segment again. That is, that, that tickles my fancy. Now here's something pretty cool. Pretty sweet, I like this. One Colossus, two Colossus, nope. Most generally, when players start building Colossus, they never stop building Colossus ever until the end of time. First, plays very differently. If we look over in Camp Rain, Rain is doing the ultra traditional Protoss moves. He's staying low on gateway count. He's staying at a conservative four. This is a nice pro gamer move, finding the money to be able to get this expo here. But, you know, two robos right off the bat, because boy howdy do we love Colossus. But check out this really sweet move from first. Getting up tons of gateways. Look at, look at the number of gateways coming up right now. He's going to a grand total of nine. In the unit production tab, has built almost nothing. One of these zealots and two of these stalkers were, or one of these stalkers was from the start of the game. So he's made three sentries, and then beyond that, a single zealot and a pair of stalkers. That's it. Like super idle gateways. and then going straight for this warp prism. Very funky move. Plus two, uh, ground weapon, is going to be a little more important than charge. Broadly speaking, first is playing very passively. He's trying to delay and build as many gateways as possible. Charge is not going to allow him to defend three bases better, and it's not going to allow him to attack into his opponent's three base any better. And a lot of this is because we were just constantly sending in uh, Hallucinated Phoenix to spot stuff. Second Robo certainly is coming up for first, but look at this juicy little push. What an odd push to make. What just a freaking weird push timing to throw down. Right now, well behind in the Colossus count. Four to one. And these two Colossus 
are ahead of first next to Colossus. I mean, first is looking bad by most measures. He's looking terrible. Because, <laughs> I mean, normally in PvP, you're like, well, I'm behind in Colossus, so, you know, good game. We're done. That was a good game. It sucks, right? But we're going to see first really bring the noise. Tons of gateways. There's the charge coming up. There's the chrono boost on the plus two. Plus weapon upgrades, so unbelievably important. And all of a sudden, Rain, who thinks he has a very straightforward defense, a couple things are going to happen on Rain's camp. And this will actually happen for all players. I rewound way too much, but that's okay. I will just X8 it. When Rain begins to see that this push is coming, and here is the push of coming, coming, we will see that Rain must fairly promptly begin producing a whole lot of gateway units. Here's three zealots getting morphed in. Bluntly, three zealots, that's two gateways that could have been made. The gateway count is going to be quite low for Rain this whole game, but you see it's uh, up to nine for first. So this little dual pronged attack. It's very easy to run away because the stalker is actually the, the excuse me, the Colossus is the slowest um, part of the Protoss army. So Colossi can't chase you down. So this little engagement happens. Well, we lost some sentries, but those aren't hugely devastating. The zealots wa uh, waltz into the main base. A second warp in from rain. And it seems like, oh my god, all is lost. This went this went so badly. But, quite fortunately, we see that Rain is still at four warp gates. Because Rain has built a ton of extra zealots. We have the six here, but there were a couple that were morphed in up here that we got to pick off. And in the meantime, our expansion is totally up and running throughout this whole shebang. So continuing off this, Rain, uh, excuse me, first gets his Twilight Council tech up. Many players would have lost a ton of workers in this position. First killed off a pair, which, you know, is it's not amazing, but still not bad. And yet again, first moves in with this warp prism. Oh, oh my god, I forgot a really important thing that was going on. Let me, let me come back. Oh, crap, crap. Times eight, times eight, times eight, times eight, times eight, times eight. Times eight. Here's where I'm actually going to select these nine warp gates. I can go to the first game and actually show them. Okay, so we see that there's nine zealots available to be warped in. He does the drop here. He does the push. He warps in a little bit here, so he leaves two open. Now look at watch these warp gates. And he's desperately trying to get these other colossus out. Most players would be losing their mind right now. And they'd be like, ooh, that attack didn't work well. Warp, 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 warp. Nope. First, stay in put, stay in calm. Doing nothing, doing nothing, doing nothing, doing nothing, doing nothing, doing nothing, saying, hey, you know what? I want to attack some more. Only things he warps in, in fact, actually, only things he really builds are uh, gas units. Robos, hyperactive. And geez louise, what do you know, first is adding on more gateways. It's going up to a total of 13. Very the opposite of most Protoss players in this matchup. So we see, in fact, Rain is getting ready to make an attack. First is doing some other just generally good housekeeping, making sure these pylons are ringed and all this jazz, but quite literally nothing is going down for first. He has the money to do stuff. This probe is actually going to be what spots it. This observer is like, hey, wait a minute. Your probes are under attack. And I heard four dudes getting morphed in. Yeah. For this war prism up here. Now first, who was behind in Colossus production, has actually gotten the lead in Colossus because Rain opted to make a whole bunch of immortals. The player who wins the Colossus versus Colossus confrontation is almost always the player who has the lead in immortals because they just kill so freaking unreal fast. So we're going to watch the stunning maneuvers that are to come. 
This war prison play, you really do not see on those NA ladders. Here's five zealots getting warped in. But look at the notable amount that are left available. And he actually can do some more warp ins. But that's what this warp prison is all about. So first, who left his gateways idle almost all game. At the 11th hour, warped in a whole boatload of zealots. Nice. And even gets this really nice snipe that isn't going to change a huge amount. Largely because this Mothership core is way the hell over here. But to be able to engage in this battle, there are a lot of these Immortals here. And now the Time Warp is going to be huge. This is a sweet play that we only really pick up by having a lot of extra gateways to throw down. Suddenly these Colossi are going to be glitching out like crazy and can't really run anywhere. Suddenly, engagements and PvP are cool, as opposed to just big, boring, one-sided swing-ins. <laughs> nice. I think that's a good place to um, end uh, part two. Kind of an, a shorter part two, but why not? We'll do a nice, clean part three. Um, so, most notably what we saw out of first is there's significantly more bold plays that we're seeing first make. And he's taking a really early third. Oh god, you know what? Let's recap. You know what? You know what I think this needs? I think this needs a recap, you guys. Why not? Why not? <sighs> also, Narat said they both had two TCs. What's a TC? So, given this edge, we see that not a panicked flood of immortals by any regards. Getting out, just a single observer, and then two immortals before swiftly teching up to a robo in response to the enemy's robo. Oh, <laughs> Twilight Council. <laughs> oh, they both had two Twilight Councils. Well, that, that seems very fair. A common error when you DT rush or blink rush and then forget about it. Oh, that's right, he's going to build a second one right there, isn't that right? Very bold expo. And rather than go for a very swift, you know, max out on Colossus, instead gets a War Prism. Gets himself some more gateways, goes up to seven. And then gets himself the second Robo. That is hilarious. There's a second Twilight Council. <laughs> Both players. <laughs> two Twilight Councils. Oh, two Twilight Councils. It's too good. And first begins a maneuver that would kill a lesser player. There's uh, another key reason why this is good. If first does huge damage in the main base, Rain might think to himself, Oh my god, quickly, do a huge attack! In small numbers, Colossi get crushed by big gateway numbers. So first has the potential to get into a favorable engagement. Pick-offs on the rocks. Warp-ins in the main. Rain's a little too good to fall to that, but that's fine. Easy recalling home. We can even walk. Making great use out of that Mothership Core, whereas most players just have it chill at maxed out energy. And we see the Mothership Core is pretty much going to be maxed by that second engagement. Yet more gateways. Almost no gateway unit production. These two sentries and this stalker were there to begin with. An extra round of zealots. No, I actually think these sentries are new. But that stalker is old. One of the zealots is old. Other than that... Gateways, 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 gateways. More scouting. Good housekeeping. Just checking those sides. And we actually see this probe, uh, very subtly, is getting ready to take yet another base. Because this war prism is really going to be our aggressive tool. But the observer spots the attack incoming. War prism that once upon a time was a defensive tool, or excuse me, an offensive tool, is now going to be a defensive tool. Nice spread outage. Rain. Gets dropped from behind. Ah! Zealots warping in the front. Why more zealots in front and fewer in back? Well, because his immortals are about to break through and kill off our immortals. We don't want that. And then Rain gets the big, big ol' edge in this fight. And you know what the first thing first thinks about? <laughs> Taking another base. 
Oh, yes. Why don't you take that base? Take that base first. We'll see that happen in part three. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for part three. We're on a break.